Hello, I, my name is Ruben Garcia. I'm, uh, I'm here at Annunciation House, an organization that um, has been responding to, to the immigrant, the undocumented here on the border between El Paso, Texas and, and Juarez, Mexico. El Paso being right on the border with with Mexico, uh, right across from Ciudad Juarez. El Paso has been historically one of the entryways for immigrants into the United States. And um, throughout all the years that we've been in existence, we've been offering hospitality, giving immigrants, refugees, hospitality, a place to sleep, to eat, while they try and see what their next step is, is going to be. Over the years that that we've been doing this, we've, we've welcomed tens of thousands, in excess of 120,000 from 40, 50 different countries. Immigrants who flee because of, of poverty, immigrants who flee because of political turmoil, immigrants who flee because their lives are in danger. Um, all these are reasons that push people into the stream of migration and because right now the immigration um, issue is such a controversial issue, um, legal immigration is exceedingly difficult. You might almost say non-existent. Um, and so people out of desperation cross the river, out of desperation they flee their home in the hopes that, that they can find protection or, or be able to make a new life or find the way to to, to raise the resources to feed their, their children, their families back home. We see many people right now that are fleeing the violence in, in Mexico, people who have had members of their family killed, people who have had their, their, their businesses destroyed, who have been threatened with kidnapping and extortion. And you realize that every year we in the United States consume 25 to 40 billion dollars worth of illegal drugs. All of that money is then channeled back into Mexico and all of that money is used to help corrupt the police structure, the law enforcement structure, the military structure, the political structure, the judicial structure. There have been, over the last four years, almost 11,000 people killed in Juarez. And of that number, there probably has been only 15 to 20 arrests made. There have been no arrests, there have been no trials for the vast majority of the thousands who have been killed because the structure is so utterly corrupt. Where do the guns come that are being used to kill all these people? They are purchased in the United States and then they're smuggled into Mexico. So I earlier mentioned to you that the work we do is a work of justice. Hospitality is very, very basic. You know, it's giving people a bed and, and, and the sheets to sleep on. It's giving people a place where they can have a shower and they can have their meals and they can have changes of clothing. You know, so it's very, very basic. But it's a work of justice because when you welcome this immigrant, this refugee, you are acknowledging that you are connected to them. You are acknowledging you are here in part because of me and I have to to be honest with myself I have to be willing to to see how we are connected together and being here I think I've really realized um, how important it is to get to know the individual like in a lot of situations for like the homeless or migrants or any big population of people um, sometimes it just becomes legislation and they become just a big group of people in the way you look at things, especially in politics. 
Um, but here, it's like living with a family and you actually get to know people and you get to hear their stories and see that they're just people like everybody else. And I think that's really neat to, to like I said, um, see the individual instead of putting people in boxes and just thinking of them as this piece of legislation or what's fair. Because when you actually sit down and talk to someone, um, you kind of forget all of that because you really feel like you can relate to them. We all have things in common. So that's really one cool thing that I've experienced here. I think it's important to have some kind of insight as to how it is that Annunciation House got started um, back 34 years ago. It, it was the result of a process of discernment by a group of young adults who simply wanted to give some kind of, of an answer for themselves personally. We approached it from a faith perspective. One of the things that was really important to us was um, the reflection that the God of Scripture identifies first and foremost with the poor, the marginalized, the enslaved. The God of the New Testament is a God that continually places its person among the poor and the least among us. And the reason that was so important to us was that the work of responding to the reality that we find ourselves in and, and in a sense, it's, it's, it's a work of justice. Um, and, and it's something that all of us are called to do, wherever we may be. When we ask ourselves the question, how do I live my life with greater depth, greater sense of meaning and purpose, I think part of the answer is going to be, I'm gonna have to go and place myself among the poor and see where the poor take me. Ruben is very inspiring. Um, just hearing him talk, he so he speaks so well. He speaks so powerfully from his heart, and he's dedicated so much of his life to this house, to people in in transition, in migration, and um, I I can't think of a better example person who to to inspire you to do social justice work.